In this lesson, we are going to talk about emitters, and uh, emitters are absolutely nothing fancy or cryptic. They are simply artificial light sources, such as a flashlight or bulb or anything else you can imagine that is not a light made by nature. So, here under scene, object under environment, if you want your scene to be illuminated exclusively by emitters, you will set this environment type to none and obviously you want to keep the sun turned off now let's first establish our environment so our exposure value should be something different and uh, let's use this uh, help file we said at the very end of uh, help file let me just uh, minimize that so it's uh, inside the recording area and uh, Let's say that we want to test emitters in some sort of a home or office environment. So here it says that uh, offices and work areas have roughly the value of 7 to 8. So that is all applicable only if uh, ISO is 100. So let's use that as a rough guideline and enter maybe 7 here. And since we have this lock exposure checked, it will automatically adapt this shutter speed to accommodate that new exposure value. Now let's see what will happen if we hit this uh, fire render and this is what will happen. It will say that the scene has errors. So this is Maxwell informing you that it doesn't have a light source. So you have to create some sort of a light source and uh, we will create an emitter. An emitter can be any object inside Sina 4D, either primitive or polygon one. So let's go with the simplest of them all and that is this uh, polygon object. I will exit my camera, frame the scene and uh, let's drag this guy. Let's even go to top view. Let's drag this guy roughly right above our object and uh, maybe we will even scale it to something that roughly represents a light bulb in size so maybe 5 by 5 and that will also give you an idea that you really don't have to use perfectly precise uh, values in uh, Maxwell so let's actually pull this guy a little bit uh, up maybe something around uh, here Let's go back to our camera view and uh, we will convert this to a polygon object. We can also freely rename this to emitter like this and uh, this polygon object will actually be a surface which will illuminate the scene. Now the second part is uh, to create a material because there is a special type of material which is called emitter. So let's uh, create one. And immediately you'll notice that Maxwell will ask you for a color or power in watts and efficiency of that uh, light. We will talk about this in a moment. So let's create a default emitter and uh, see what it does. As you can see, you have a bunch of new options here, which we will explain. And also notice that uh, this emitter is actually a component of a layer system, so you can actually mix emitters and uh, materials, but consider emitter as a special type of material. So let's close this for a moment and we will apply our emitter to our polygon object. So now let's hit F and uh, let's try to refresh this scene. And now we have some rendering going on because uh, Maxwell actually has a light source in the scene, but uh, everything is black, which is not really what we want, obviously. So there is a problem somewhere and uh, let's resolve it. The origin of this problem is this uh, polygon object. So let's actually get out from our camera and uh, enter polygon mode. And uh, here we can see that our face is tinted orange and on the bottom is tinted blue. That means that normal of this polygon, let me demonstrate that, is 
pointing this way. Okay, I can actually just for a moment enable polygon normals. So here under viewport menu, you can check this normals and once I select this emitter, once again, you can see that a little guy. Now, the light from emitters in Maxwell will be emitted only in direction of polygon normals. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So, this side won't emit any light, only the side to which normal is pointing. So, if I reverse the normal, let's actually first delete this guy, and uh, if I reverse the normal by pressing U and R, now if I get back to my camera, hit F, I should get something, but do note that Maxwell cannot register every single change in Cena for this. So therefore, if you're not sure, simply hit refresh and uh, there you go. We have a simple illumination with this emitter, so we can stop this. And that's uh, pretty much all there is to it. Just have to create objects and simply attach emitters to them. So you can have as many emitters as you want. And I really encourage you to use simplest geometry you can use to represent your lights because that way things will render faster. Now I noticed that here I have a slight blurring. Let's just uh, adjust our f-stop so we get rid of that uh, depth of field. So maybe I will use double value here so I can type uh, times 2 and uh, now I got rid of that uh, blurring here because I really want this uh, to be in focus uh, for our demonstration of uh, emitters. Now I'm sure you're a little bit uh, scared by all these uh, settings but actually they are quite simple. So let me stack this material manager and this uh, fire preview side by side roughly. Let's even scale this uh, down and uh, we will have a live preview when we will change the settings here in this uh, material editor slash emitter editor. So let's enable our fire preview and uh, we have uh, various possibilities of uh, how to use our emitter. So we can use color and luminance, we can use temperature of emission, which is measured in kelvins and uh, Immediately you can see different results and we can also use image emission texture and uh, that actually gives us a possibility to load an image and then grayscale values in the image will be used to actually give luminance information to your emitter. I hope that makes sense and uh, let's deal with this color and luminance which is uh, by far easier way to set up your light. So currently, let's actually stop this. We have a pure white color of emission. We have a power of that uh, emission, which equals 40 watts. And this efficacy is, uh, let's try to simplify. It's a efficiency coefficient of uh, this amount of power. So for example, in a standard light bulb, most of the energy it draws is converted to heat, not light. So it loses a lot of energy, or in other words, only a percentage is being emitted by light. And that percentage is this efficacy. So basically says how efficient this uh, value here is. Okay, I really hope that makes sense and uh, that it didn't confuse you. So let's change these values a little bit so you can see how this works. And uh, if you use color values here, just a slight hint of a color inside that emitter will be displayed here. Okay, so no need to saturate your emitters with uh, really vivid colors. So for example, if you put this to orange, you'll get uh, these kinds of results. So you really want to use subtle coloring for your emitters if you want to add certain mood to our scene, so something roughly around 5% or maybe 6, 7, something like that. So now, effectively, I've added just a little bit of warmth 
into my scene and um, if you increase the power for example you choose for this emitter to be a standard light bulb that uh, has roughly 65 watts the result will be that uh, it will illuminate the environment more that is really really simple now let me prove you once again that scene scale is absolutely crucial in Maxwell render because uh, it has a great impact on everything you do so without changing any values here let's just uh, double check we have this illumination so it's uh, really vivid and you can clearly see the object now let's actually close both of these guys and uh, exit this camera and uh, watch what happens if i select that same emitter and really scale it to a large size and actually i will use this uh, numerical input so thousand by thousand that is absolutely huge and it almost encompasses uh, double the size of our grid environment let's get back to our scene and uh, seems that uh, this doodle guy sneaked in somehow take a look now what will happen if i do a preview render so we haven't changed anything the emitter values are completely the same but this guy is now very very dark now why is that what we did now is that uh, this power this value of 65 watts with this efficacy is now applied to this giant object so in other words the power is dissipated throughout this complete object so scene scale does matter it's absolutely crucial in maxwell and understanding the scale the measure of things is really important if you want to work successfully with it so to simplify we now took a simple light bulb and stretched all its power to a size of uh, let's say roughly 10 football fields so that's practically invisible illumination so let's scale this guy backwards so let's select it here and it was uh, 5 by 5 if i remember correctly so now if we do the same and simply re-render it's all once again good so keep this in mind and uh, you will be fine now there are a few other ways you can use emitters and describe their illumination power and intensity and one of them is via this uh, power now if i enable this then i will get access to this uh, value and i can even choose international units of measurement to get really i mean really precise results so for example if i enter a thousand here i will get this type uh, of illumination so if this precision isn't enough for you there is something even more precise and there is this guy here so this is really similar to index of refraction value in bsdf and uh, here you can load ies files which come from light manufacturers and they are the real thing so if needed you can load a specific light bulb specification via this and you will get the real thing the replica of that light inside maxwell render so a superb feature if you ask me and uh, that is absolutely great now i really don't want to bug you with all the technical stuff so i suggest that you use this watts and leave this efficacy at default value and uh, experiment with that for starters now as you notice roughly in this area our image is blown out so this is simply not good if you want to have a normal exposure because you really don't want your images to be blown out or washed out like this unless you are really going for that uh, artistic look so some of you may be wondering since there are quite a few things regarding scale and precision in maxwell to keep track of you might be really wondering how can you make sure that something is not out of uh, 
basically plausible values. Hope you understand what I mean. So in other words, how can you calibrate your scene and be sure that lights will be represented correctly and that materials will be represented correctly? So for example, let's say that you create a yellow material, but your environment is too strong and the power coming from emitters is too strong and then your material won't be yellow, it will probably be white. So let me show you how you can calibrate your scenes by following a simple recipe in our next lesson.